Shalom, and welcome back to the broadcast. I'm Sean, your host. Today we are resuming our study in the ancient book of Enoch. And we are ready to begin with chapter 82 today. And we'll probably go through chapter 87. Now chapter 82 uh, still deals a little bit more with the liminary stuff. Um, and Enoch's instructing Methuselah to to keep in mind all the things that he's saying and to preserve all the books and you know as legend has it all these books made it onto the boat with Noah um, but who's to say for sure and then uh, chapter 83 begins he starts to recount from Methuselah his son Methuselah all the the two visions that he had uh, and they appear to be a vision about the great flood that would come upon the earth and a vision about the f angels coming down and mating with the women. And of course, the vision of the angels coming down uh, uses a lot of apocalyptic symbolism type stuff. Um, but it's, we can, you can kind of make it out uh, what it's talking about. And uh, so that's kind of what's on the agenda for this morning. Uh, so it does start to get interesting again, um, although, like, like I said, the first chapter here that we read, chapter 82, d does still deal with some luminary stuff. So we're going to jump right into that real quick. The website is www.scriptureandprophecy.com. That's where you go to find the archives, devotionals. Um, that's also where you go to support this mission of truth. And you can do that by PayPal or Patreon subscribers. Um or there is a post office box as well. I'd also highly recommend, if you haven't already, to join the email list. I don't send emails out very often. Matter of fact, it's probably been six months since I sent an email out. Uh, but the reason for that is because the day will inevitably come, and maybe sooner rather than later, where YouTube decides to shut down uh, the podcast or... You know, as as these big tech companies begin to shut people like me down, uh, there needs to be a way for me to communicate with you to find, so I can so I can tell you where else to find work that I'm doing and things of that nature. So please consider joining the email list. Okay, all right, let's dig right in. We're gonna take a look, starting with chapter 82, the ancient book of Enoch. Let's begin. Verse 1 And now, my son, Methuselah, all these things I am recounting to thee and writing down for thee. And I have revealed to thee everything and given thee books concerning all these. So preserve, my son, Methuselah, the books from thy father's hand, and see that thou deliver them to the generations of the world. I have given wisdom to thee, and to thy children, and thy children that shall be to thee. And they may give it to their children for their generations, this wisdom, namely that, passes their thought. And those who understand it shall not sleep, but shall listen with the ear, that they may learn this wisdom. And it shall please those that eat thereof better than good food. Blessed are all the righteous, blessed are all those who walk in the way of righteousness, and sin not as the sinners, and the reckoning of all their days in which the sun traverses the heavens, entering into the departing from the portals for thirty days, and the heads of thousands of the order of the stars, together with the four which are intercalated, which divide the four portions of the year which lead them and enter with them four days. Owing to them men shall be at fault and not reckoning them in the whole reckoning of the year. Yea, men shall be at fault and not recognize them accurately. Okay, here we here, here again, uh, for the second or third time, Enoch's made the point that men will err when it comes to reckoning the year, Right? And there is no doubt in my mind that we have definitely got confused calendars and things are not uh, on par. And, uh, 
you know, you'd want might wonder why would the enemy want to do this? Confuse the calendars? Well, because the cal- you know all these things were for seasons and times, and uh, it also uh, God's appointed times. You know the the Moadim, the feast, uh, which I think still matter, um, at least in a very uh, memorial type of way. And so, uh, Enoch's making the point that, yeah, the calendars are going to be confused. At least that's the way I'm understanding it as we read that. Verse 6, For they belong to the reckoning of the year and are truly recorded thereon forever, one in the first portal and one in the third and one in the fourth and one in the sixth. And and the year is completed in 364 days. And the account thereof is accurate. Accurate. And the recorded reckoning thereof exact for the luminaries and the months and the festivals and years and days has Uriel shown and revealed to me, to whom the Lord of the whole creation of the world has subjected the host of heaven. And he has power over night, over night and day and in the heaven to cause the light to give light to men, sun, moon, and stars, and all the powers of the heaven, which revolve in their circular chariots. These are the orders of the stars which set in their place and in their seasons and festivals and months. And these are the names of those who lead them, who watch that they enter at their times, in their orders, in their seasons, in their months, and in their periods of dominion, and in their positions. There are four leaders who divide the four parts of the year into first, and after them the twelve leaders of the order who divide the months, and for the... 360 days there are heads over thousands who divide the days and for the four intercalary days there are the leaders which sunder the four parts of the year and these heads over thousands are intercalated between intercalated between leader and leader each behind a station but their leaders make the division and these are the names of the leaders who divide the four parts of the year which are ordained milk el hel amalek and mel el and narel and the names of those who lead them ad narel and idushuel and elom el these three follow the leaders of the orders and there is one that follows the three leaders of the orders which follow those leaders of stations that divide the four parts of the year in the beginning of the year, Melchijael rises first and rules, who is named Tam Ani, and son, and all the days of his dominion whilst he bears rule are ninety one days. And these are the signs of the days which are to be seen on the earth in the days of his dominion sweat and heat and calms, and the trees bear fruit, and leaves are produced on all the trees in the harvest of wheat. And the rose flowers and all the flowers which come forth in the field, but the trees of winter season become withered. And these are the names of the leaders which are under them Barkiel, Zalibsel, and another who is added to the head of thousands called Hilujoseph. And the days of the dominion of this leader are at an end. The next leader after him is Hel Emimelech, whom one's name the Shining Sun. And all the days of his light are ninety-one days. And these are the rains of his days on the earth, glowing heat and dryness, and the trees ripen their fruit, and the produce of all their fruits ripen and ready. And the sheep pair and become pregnant, and all the fruit of the earth are gathered in, and everything that is in the fields and the winepress, and these things take place in the days of his dominion. These are the names and the orders and the leaders of those heads of thousands, Gidajal, Kiel, and Hiel, and the names of the heads of the thousands which are added to them, Asaphel, and the days of his dominion are at an end. Okay, now we're going into chapter 83, which begins where Enoch begins to describe these visions that he's had in the past, but he's recounting them to Methuselah, because remember, he's telling Methuselah to write all this stuff down, and he's giving these books to Methuselah to hand down to the generations that should provide wisdom and blessing to all those further generations. So let's begin. We're not going to get through all of the visions, but uh, we'll get through chapter 87. So 83 to 87, 
uh, lots of cool information in here, but you got to pay attention because, again, it uses a lot of symbolism, similar to the book of Revelation, where it's talking about one thing, but it's using symbolism to describe the thing. And so uh, that is kind of what Enoch's visions are like here as well. All right, so let's take a look, starting with chapter 83 here, verse 1. And now, my son Methuselah, I will show thee all my visions which I have seen, recounting them before thee. Two visions I saw before I took a wife, and the one was quite unlike the other. The first was when I was learning to write, the second before I took thy mother, when I saw a terrible vision, and regarding them I prayed to the Lord. I had laid me down in the house of my grandfather, Mahaalel, when I saw a vision how the heaven collapsed and was borne off and fell off the earth. And when it fell to the earth, I saw how the earth was swallowed up in a great abyss, and mountains were suspended on mountains, and hills sank down on hills, and high trees were rent from their stems and hurled down and sunk in the abyss. And thereupon a word fell into my mouth, and I lifted up my voice to cry aloud, and I said, The earth is destroyed. And my grandfather Mahalel waked me as I lay near him, and he said unto me, Why dost thou cry so, my son? And why dost thou make such lamentation? And I recounted to him the whole vision which I had seen, and he said unto me, A terrible thing hast thou seen, my son, and of grave moment is thy dream vision as to the secrets of all the sin in the earth. It must sink into the abyss and be destroyed with great destruction. So his grandfather Mahalel Mahalel, that's always a hard name to say, uh, is is uh, saying, yeah, you, your vision, you've seen a terrible thing. And he's saying, but because of the sin of this world, because of how great the sin has become, this world must be destroyed and must uh, go into the abyss. Again, talking about the flood. And now, my son, arise and make petition to the Lord of glory, since thou art a believer, that a remnant may remain on the earth, and that he may not destroy the whole earth. My son, from heaven all this will come upon the earth, and upon the earth there will be great destruction. After that I arose, and I prayed, and I implored, and I besought, and I wrote down my prayer for the generations of the world. And I will show, you, show everything to thee, my son, Methuselah. And when I had gone forth below to see and seen the heaven and the earth rising in the east and the moon setting in the west and a few stars and the whole earth and everything he has had known it in the beginning, then I blessed the Lord of judgment and exalted him because he had made the sun to go forth from the windows of the east. And he ascended and he arose to the face of heaven and he set out and kept traversing the path shown unto him. Chapter 84. And chapter 84 begins with Enoch's prayer for God to be merciful and to leave a remnant. And as we know, in all the earth, God only found the one righteous man, Noah. And save eight people, the rest were destroyed. Hmm. I hope those aren't the type of numbers that we, that we have at the end of this age. At the end of all things. Let's begin with chapter 84. Verse 1. And I lifted up my hands in righteousness and blessed the holy and great one and spake with the breath of my mouth and with the tongue of flesh which God has made for the children of the flesh of men that they should speak therewith. And he gave them breath and a tongue and a mouth that they should speak therewith. Blessed be thou, O Lord King, great and mighty in thy greatness, Lord of the whole creation of heaven. King of kings and the God of the whole world, and thy power and kingship and greatness abide forever and ever. And throughout all generations thy dominion, and all the heavens are thy throne forever, and the whole earth is thy footstool forever and ever. For thou hast made, and thou rulest all things, and nothing is too hard for thee. Wisdom departs not from the place of thy throne, nor turns away from thy presence. And thou knowest, and seest, and hearest everything. And there is nothing hidden from thee, for thou seest everything. And now the angels of thy, of thy heavens are now guilty of trespass. And upon the flesh of men abideth thy watch until the great day of judgment. 
And now, O God, and Lord, and great King, I implore and beseech thee to fulfill my prayer, to leave me a posterity on earth, and to not destroy all the flesh of man, and to make the earth without inhabitant, so that there should be an eternal destruction. And now, my Lord, destroy from the earth the flesh which thou has aroused thy wrath, but the flesh of righteousness and uprightness establish as a plant of eternal seed, and hide not thy face from the prayer of thy servant, O Lord. And after this, I, s I saw another dream, and I will show you the whole dream to thee, my son. And Enoch lifted up his voice, and he spake to his son Methuselah, To thee, my son, will I speak. Hear my words, incline thy ear to the dream vision of thy father. Before I took thy mother, Edna, I saw in a vision on my bed, and behold, a bull came forth from the earth, and that bull was white, and after it came forth a heifer, and along with his ladder came forth two bulls, and one of them black and the other red. And that black bull gored the red one, and pursued him over all pursued him over the earth. And thereupon I could no longer see that red bull, but the black bull grew, grew and that heifer went with him. And I saw that many oxen proceeded from him, which resembled and followed him. And that cow, that first one, went from the presence of that first boar, bull in order to seek that red one, and found him not, and lamented with a great lamentation over him, and sought him. And I looked till that first bull came to her and quieted her. And from that time onward she cried no more. And after that she bore another white bull, and after him she bore many bulls and a black cow's. And I saw in my sleep that the white bull likewise grow and become a great white bull, and from him proceeded many white bulls, and they resembled him, and they began to beget many white bulls, which resembled them, one following the other, even many. Okay. Now, according to Ken Johnson's commentary, he believes that that's talking about how Adam and Eve uh, had children, and one was murdered by the other one, and then... They had, you know, and then Eve lamented over the loss of her son, but then she had another son, Seth, and Seth went on to, and, and then you started to have a big lineage coming out of Seth. And then as we move into chapter 86, it appears to be talking about how the angels came down, mated with these people, and produced things that were not normal to produce. And I'll kind of give you a... Uh, we'll look at that here in just a second. I should also note that the, the scriptures, when they talk about stars, are always talking about angels. And I tell you this all the time. And just like in the book of Revelation, it says, I saw a star fall, and he had the key to the bottomless pit. And of course, we know it's talking about an angel because it goes on to tell us what his name is and all of that. And likewise here, as we're getting ready to read in chapter 86, we're going to see an angel fall down to the earth. And then following after that, many more fall come to the earth to do exactly what that first one was doing. And of course, the first one, the, the ringleader, as we believe it to be Azul. Um, but again, it's interpretation. And that's the thing. It's interpretation. All right, I'm running out of time, so let's go ahead. Chapter 86. And again I saw with my eyes, and I slept, and I saw heaven above, and behold, a star fell from heaven, and it arose, and eat, and pastured among those oxen. And after that I saw the large and the black oxen, and behold, they all changed their stalls, and pastors, and their cattle, and began to live with each other. And again I saw in the vision, and looked towards heaven, and behold, I saw many stars descend, and cast themselves down from the heaven to that first star, and they became bulls among those cattle, and pastured them amongst them. Alright, so it's using bulls to describe people, it appears, and the angels came down and then made themselves as people, is what it seems to be describing. Let's continue on. Verse 4, And I looked at them, and I saw, and behold, they all let out their privy members, like horses, and began to cover the cows of the oxen, and they all became pregnant, and bare elephants and camels and asses. All right, so they made themselves as bulls, just like the other bulls, and then they started mating, right? But they didn't produce more bulls. Instead, they produced, it says, elephants and camels and asses. And I think what that's getting at is that they didn't 
What was born wasn't what should naturally come as a result of a union. What came out was strange things instead. Which we know to be the Nephilim, right? The giants. And all the oxen feared them and were frightened at them and began to bite with their teeth and to devour and and to gore with their horns. And they began, moreover, to devour those oxen. And behold, all the children of the earth began to tremble and quake before them and to flee from them. Chapter 87. And again, I saw how they began to gore each other and to devour each other. And the earth began to cry aloud. And I raised my eyes again to heaven. And saw in the vision, and behold, there came forth from heaven things who were like white men. And four went forth from that place, and three with them. And those three that had last come forth grasped me by the hand and took me up, away from the generations of the earth, and raised me up to a lofty place and showed me a tower raised high above the earth. And all the hills were lower. And one said to me, Remain here till thou seest everything that befalls those elephants, camels, and asses, and the stars, the oxen, and all of them. Who is saying, Remain here until you see what's going to happen to the offspring of this madness, and to the stars, which are the angels, and to the oxen, which would be the human beings that were involved. And that is where we're going to stop today. So that is Enoch, chapter 82 through 87. And my prayer, as always, in the powerful name of Yeshua, in the powerful name of Jesus, is that you've been blessed by this morning's study and that it's caused you to think and causes you to draw nearer and closer to the one true God. All right, friends, that's all I have for you this morning. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.